Well, glory to God. How many of you are ready for a changed life? Yes. Better than what you had yesterday. Yes. Better than what you had last Sunday. Yes. Amen. Got to get some believers turned on in here. Got to turn your believer on. Turn your believing believer on inside of you. Got to get your hearing turned on. How many of you are ready to hear? Yes. All right. How many are really ready to hear the word? Yes. Okay. How many of you are ready to do the word? Yes. So we lost a third. You're ready to do the word. Yes. Ready to teach Sunday school if God calls you to. Yes. I'd appreciate a little more enthusiasm about that. Yeah. Ready to volunteer to help with maintenance on the building and the yards. Yes. Amen. Ready to be involved in helping pick people up from the open door mission. Yes. Come on. Amen. They've asked us to. God. What are we waiting on? You. Pick up and delivery. Waiting on that. How many of you are ready to be an usher? Excuse me, an usher or a greeter? Yes. Amen. We need more ushers and more greeters. Yes. Why? We'd like to give the guys that have been out there for a few years a break. Amen. Amen. We want that. And so, <clears throat> guess where we have to draw from? What was that verse you sang about joy? The, the, the one joy thing? And I, I don't remember. It's okay. But I was, I was reading the other day and thinking about Isaiah 26, 3. It says, with joy you will draw water out of the wells of salvation. No joy, no water. The water's in the well. But joy is the bucket. Yes. You got to have some joy yes. if you want to enjoy the salvation. Yes. If, if you're in a church that just practices mean, no. it'll run out. No. If you're in a church, I, I saw a sign the other day, and the name of this church is the Church of No Drama. I thought, kind of catchy. The Church of No Drama. And, you know, it used to, I used to try to hold on to people when we were first building a church in the early 70s, you know, and I was going door to door knocking, just inviting people to church and all of that. And then somebody would start, to, they'd, they'd get disgruntled and want to leave. I'd try to talk them into staying, and they'd leave anyway. And if they stayed, they made me miserable. Uh, we don't do that. If we're your flavor, stay and enjoy us. Your flavor, rest as you go. Amen. You don't like our church? There's other churches in town you might like. But if we're your flavor, jump in with all your heart. Give it all you got. Don't quit. Don't look back. Don't give up. Stay with it through thick and thin. And we've been through some thick and thin here. We've been through some ups and downs. We've been through. Uh, the criticisms. We've been through some of those things. And we've been through some stuff. We're not con uh, concentrating on what we've been through. We always concentrate on who we're working for and where we're going to. Yes, Amen. Amen. And that's the joy of serving God today as we live in the peace of God. We live in the power of God. No matter what's going on, keep your peace. Keep your peace. That way when the devil throws something at you, you just got, all right. You started it. Remember that. I like, uh, forgive me, I like the Jack Reacher movies. One of the movies, five guys pick a fight with him. And outside in the alley, they're starting to fight. Or they, they don't fight yet. And he's trying to talk them out of it. And they really want to fight. And he looks at him. He goes, remember, you wanted this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying get arrogant with the devil, but you need to be at such a place all the time on your worst day, you can handle it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and still be in faith about it. And uh, listen, sometimes 
when I'm fighting the devil, I don't have my church look on. Okay, I'll get back to that later. I could tell that that didn't quite catch there. Hallelujah. St. John's Gospel. I'm already preaching. I'm just going to read some verses. St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, in your Bible is the Word Word capitalized. All right, that means it's a name. Actually, it's the name that is above every name. The Word was, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Word. We know God by words. We know Jesus by words. Jesus was and is the word. He's the living word. He's the bread of life. He's the light of the world. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the first and the last. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling this the Jesus season message. You know, we're, we're headed into k- k- Christmas. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. We're headed into the Christmas season. So I, w- I want to get a jump on this and say this is the Jesus season. Yeah. We're headed into the Jesus season. We're going to talk about him. Anytime you talk about Jesus, say that with me, would you? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say it one more time. Jesus. Okay. I want to hear it out of this side over here. Jesus. Okay. The front half's got it. The rest of you. Jesus. Okay. One more time here. Jesus. Okay. Jesus. This crew gets the pom-poms. It's like... (laughs) Jesus. Anytime you say Jesus, you identify who you're talking about, who you're praying to. I think last week I mentioned we have come to the place that the the politicians and I hate to say too much because there's too much to say, but the political spectrum that we're seeing now, you say, Pastor, are you really for the Republicans? I'm for the republic. Pastor, are you for the Democrats? I'm for democracy. And as far as Democrats or Republicans, you could put them all in a hat and shake them up and pour them out, and they're going to look pretty much the same. And I hate to be picking on them like that. I'm really not picking on them. But they're trying to water down God constantly and consistently they're trying to water down God to where God doesn't have a presence. But they're, uh, you know, last year, or maybe the year before last, they started trying to balance out prayer in school and put in uh, statues of Satan and witchcraft in some of the public buildings and in some of the public schools and have witchcraft classes in schools trying to water down God trying to water down Jesus. So be careful when you just say God. Make sure you identify Jesus as the God we serve. Learn to call on Jesus. And and I get it. I I know most people have a good heart when they say, well, God's done a lot for me. And I still say those things too. But I have such a focus on Jesus that I want that to be first and foremost, especially this season, the focus on Jesus. Now, don't get excited about these children making a noise. they already been prayed for. Uh, I'm thinking I need to stop and pray for some of y'all too, so y'all kind of catch up with them. (laughs) But in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word of God is Jesus. And if it's in you, it will do the works of Jesus through you. 
the Word of God in you. It must be in you. You must get it. I encourage you, if nothing else, when you come to church, write down the, the verses that we use, book, chapter, verse, and memorize it and stay with it throughout the week until it gets in you so it can come out of you at the right time. Amen. It's got to get in you in order to come out of you at the right time with the right force and do what it's intended to do. The Bible says, no word of God shall be without power. No word of God shall fall void to the earth and not produce. Isaiah talks about, and he said, the words that come from heaven, they will produce wherever they are sent. He said it will be like the snow covering the earth or the rain falling down. When the word of God comes down, it will begin to act on where it was sent. Uh, David said in the Psalms, he sitteth in the heavens and launches his words like arrows toward the earth. That's why some people live a life of sin, and one day the word of God hits them and convicts them, and they'd be driving down the road and go, ah, I need to change my life. Amen. What happened? Did you just make a turnaround? Did you just have a change of mind? The word of God intersected where you were headed to, interrupted what you were thinking about, and insisted on you making a change by the power of God now at work in your life in Jesus' mighty name. That would be a good word for the politicians to get and work on. Quit trying to figure out new ways to lie to the American public. My name's David Leggett, and I approve that message. Amen. Right. So spend time figuring out how they can lie to the public. The word of God at work in you will manifest the works of God in the earth through you. Mm. Philippians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 said it is the word working mightily in me. No, nope, that's not it. That's a different one. I'm going to get over here and just read it. Get too much stuff running around in here. Verse 13. For it is God which works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When something good comes out of you, it's God in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you said, but pastor, just some things I'm going through. Jesus already went through that for you. He already went through that for you. Jesus already went through that for you. Listen. When we say the word, we are talking about Jesus. When we say, I believe in the word of God, I believe in Jesus. The word of God, listen to this, the word of God is supernatural because he's supernatural. If you want to be supernatural, get the word of God on the inside of you. You'll be supernatural. There's been times I'd get to study in the word of God, and all, all of a sudden the Lord would bring some business thing across my mind, or something across my mind, and I would think, my goodness, what an intelligent thought. Until I catch a hold of it and say, that was you all along. You just used my brain. Amen. Amen. And I've said that I don't know how many times. If I stay with the Word of God as a pastor, He'll make me look like a genius. If I get out of the Word of God, not so much. Turn to your neighbor and say, God can make you look like a genius. I think I heard somebody say, about time. <laughs> <laughs> he does supernatural things. In the beginning was the Word. What did he do? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created I tell you today, husbands, create an atmosphere of peace and strength in your home. I say to you women today, create an atmosphere uh, of love and peace in your home. Moms and dads, I speak to you to be the high priest of your homes and to speak life and courage and bravery into your children so that they learn to not be afraid. They learn that God is for them. They learn that God is always on their side. They learn that God loves them more than anything else. He loves them so much, he went to the cross for them. Yes. He already experienced everything you're going through. Teach your children that. Churches, we need to teach that all over the world. I'm speaking to churches now. Teach your church to be strong 
to be brave, to be full of faith, to look at adversity and to say, my God is more than enough. My God can get the job done. And with God for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. We need to be like in the New Testament of the book of Acts when the, the disciples started going through towns and preaching and said, oh, oh no, oh no, those that have turned the world upside down have come to our town also. We need to be that crew that turns things upside down. You say, well, why do you want to turn it upside down? Because it was wrong side up. Yes. Get it turned in the right direction. See, and to be a doer, I want to be a doer of supernatural. I want to be able to walk some, by somebody and say a word or two and to watch a frown turn into a smile. I want to be able to go by someone that's sick and just say, be healthy. What's life change? Say, Pastor, can you do that? If I'm in the Word. Because the Word is supernatural. And if the supernatural is in me, supernatural will come out of me. So that sounds really far-fetched. Everything about Jesus is far-fetched. How could a man that never knew you die for all the wrong you've ever done and love you to such a place you could never make him not love you? That's the power of the love of God. You see, he died 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago when Jesus was on the cross, he saw every one of you sitting here today. The Lord spoke to me different times to, to speak to people when they're going through something or walking in a victory or something supernatural is taking place. God saw that day. I'm telling you today, God sees where you're at today. He sees you in church. He sees you in your tr turmoil. He sees you in your trial. He sees you in in that job insecurity or job security, God sees you. And it's like God just looks at his watch. God doesn't have a watch, by the way. There'd be somebody trying to put it on eBay. <laughs> he just goes, looking at you, goes, right on time. Right on time. Right on time, Kyle. Right on time. He sees where you're at. You're right on time. Just a couple of things I've learned over the years. You have to meditate on it to maximize it. You have to meditate on the word. That means you just stay with it. You think about it. The word meditate, one, one place, means to mutter. You know, just kind of, sometimes I'll be praying in the spirit or quoting a scripture, and Natalie will say, what did you say? I said, nothing. Said, well, I heard you say something. I said, well, I didn't say nothing. I'm just talking to myself, you know, just speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. I need to learn how to do that. Drive down the highway. His words working mightily in me. The will of God you're trying to perform in me today, I'll be a willing vessel. Lord Jesus, just start speaking stuff over. Lord, I'll let your word work in me. I'll go where you want me to go. I'm willing to be led. <clears throat> I'm willing not only to be fed, I'm willing to feed. I'm willing to help, willing to be helped. Yes. I'm willing to let your goodness work in me. Yes. See, the scriptures are more than information. The scriptures are the very thoughts of God. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what God is like, I would say get you a Bible. I, I could say it, download you a Bible. And get in it. When you start getting in the Word of God, it forms a picture. It forms a picture of, of you being successful. It forms a picture of you being healthy. It forms a picture of you being a, a winner. It does. It forms a picture of that develops, you stay with the Word of God. How many of you have ever heard of Amway? Amway, any network marketing thing. They want you to put a picture on the refrigerator 
one of the most beloved places in your home. <clears throat> they want to picture your future, picture of a car or house. That's okay. Uh, a visualization board. It's okay to visualize where you want to go. I'm not talking about Amway. I'm not talking about, I'm not saying they're bad, I'm not saying they're good. I'm just saying that's one of, I've been to the meetings this, years ago. Can't believe I even admitted that, but I did. <clears throat> but they, you get a, a, a picture. That's what the Word of God does. It paints a picture you can put on the board of your life where God wants you to be. The picture of a tither. What is the picture of a tither? Is it, Pastor, you just want 10% of my money? No, knucklehead. I want you to get the picture of you standing under an open heaven with the windows open and it's being poured out on you so much you can't stand it. Don't get stuck on, he just wants my 10%. No, that's such a flesh thought. That's such a worldly thought. That's such almost a demonic thought. Don't stop there. Hear the word until you hear it and hear it till you hear it. And then you'll be standing under the open windows of heaven. Blessings poured out on you. And God is rebuking the devourer. You don't even have to pray about it. God is rebuking the devourer for your sake. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And then you get, man, you just stay with it. You keep, you say, well, the Lord wants me healthy. Yeah, he does. My calling has not rescinded. Is God through with you? No. God doesn't want you just dragging across the finish line. Right. Amen. Yeah. I re let me see if I, I copied this the other day. Uh, I'll have to take a break. I can't find it, but <clears throat> you don't want to just ease out of life. I just want to live out my days in quiet and peace. Mm. I want to be figuratively, I want to be riding that horse over the cliff thinking he can fly. <laughs> you want to be going after it. You want to be staying after life, wide open, busy, doing for Jesus. I'm going to tell all of you that are over 60. A lot of people think you might be finished. That's a lie hell has tried to perpetuate on the world's population for years. Yep. Psalms 92, no, Psalms 20, 24. Those, that's somewhere in the Bible. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall bring forth fruit in old age. Those that be planted. I know young people have no fruit. Why? Because they're not planted. If you want to bring fruit, get planted. Endure the storms of the summer, the fall, the winter, and the spring. Planted people endure not only do they endure, they bring forth fruit that remains. And Jesus said, I've ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever the Father asks, or, or the Father may have glory in your life by producing fruit. Get after it. Don't give up to the age thing. Don't, don't give up to that. Amen. But the Word of God will form a picture. It's designed to produce what it promises. Let me stay there a minute. When you read the Word of God and get the promise of the Word, understand that it will produce what you just read. It will produce the promise. No Word of God shall be without power. No promise of God shall be without the promise of producing. Yes, amen. Mm. Regardless of what the circumstances look like. My goodness, my, my. 
When you meditate on the word, your thoughts change. When you meditate on the word of God, it'll take you beyond being a three-day Christian. You know, where you come to church and you really have a good service and you're enjoying Sunday and Monday there's some residual effect on your life and you're in day two and uh, Tuesday you're still enjoying some of the effect of Sunday but it's starting to kind of wiggle down and Wednesday, bless God, you need to be in church again on Wednesday. You know, you're going to need to be back in church on Wednesday. But as you meditate on the word of God, your words will begin to change. Your words will begin to change. Keith Moore was preaching one time, and he said when he, went, when he and his wife went to uh, Rhema Bible College, they were away from their family for, uh, for several months. And you're in a different atmosphere, Bible college, you know, different things like that. He said when he went back home, he couldn't believe how bad everybody was talking. They didn't change. He just changed the atmosphere and heard the right stuff. And when you hear the right stuff all the time, the wrong stuff really stands out. So I encourage you today, get the word of God in you so your words change. That can affect good things. Amen? Amen. When you meditate it, your health will change. And the kind of results you get will change. Your whole life will change as you start staying with the word of God. And I'm I'm going to wrap it up here. In verse 12 of John chapter 1. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That means you. Have you received him today? Then he gave you power to become one of his sons. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That power is dunamis, means explosive power power that gets something done. I believe God wants to have that explosive power operating in your life today by the word of God. You can be a person of faith and speak things, but you do your part. You meditate on the word of God. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You do what the word tells you to do. Be a doer of the word. When the Lord tells you something to do, you will never be promoted beyond your last act of disobedience. When you learn to obey God, you'll be promoted, promoted, and promoted. It'll happen every time, all the time, and any time. Do what the Word says. Amen.